You're listening to Quirpline here on QWRPFM. Quirpline this week is brought to you by the Charlemagne Boomerang Meringue. A dessert fit for an emperor that you can send to your friends with a flick of the wrist. The Charlemagne Boomerang Meringue. Only throw on level terrain. Morning, Innsberg. It's Big G Money here with A Train. How is it going, Alex? Adequately medicated. Hmm. Goals. I know a guy. You guys should uh, talk. I will talk to all of our wonderful listeners out there in scenic Innsberg. This is not a place of honor. Nothing valued is here. Least of all, the news. <laughs> The Innsberg cat burglar has struck again. The Humane Society has been emptied out for the third time this month, and they are asking for help in finding their furry friends. So if anyone has seen Waffles, Mr. Meowsington, Binky, Fucko with a PH, Ethan, Corporal Hungry Whiskers, Dog, Chonko, The Experience, Samuel Shuffle Cat, Senor Squeaks, Marmalade, Richard Thurpston the Turd, Raoul, one that I'm definitely not repeating on the radio. Why did you say f***o then? I said it with a PH. Stop that. Anyway, if anyone sees cats that answer to any of those names, please contact Officer Steve in the Innsburg PD so he can forward it to the Animal Crimes Division. They have an Animal Crimes Division? Sure do, for reasons that start with an R and end with an Ictor Hammock Slam. Oh, that adds up. And the Raster Heights Octogenarian Social Association are having an introduction to Kabaddi Night. Participants are encouraged to bring their own respirator and or oxygen supplies, but gauze and bactine will be free of charge. Sounds like a breathtaking event. Actually, Alex, as a spectator sport, it leaves quite a bit to be desired. But it does make for a thrilling manga. Shaku Netsuite Kabaddi will leave you on the edge of your seat. Huh? Edith, I didn't take you for a weeb. Sorry, I was hanging out with Gus all weekend. Boy, you know what sounds as fun as a weekend with Gus? Dirt. The Innsberg Archaeological Private Members Association is currently excavating an exciting find from Innsberg's Ice Ages. We have on the phone member at large of the Innsberg Archaeological Private Members Association, Darren von Spront. Mr. von Spront, welcome back to the show. Always a pleasure, Graham. Always a pleasure, Alex. Get your nose out of my trousers, Spronto. As ancient as they may be, your trousers hold nothing of value to me, Alex. No, I am here to tell you about a find of great historical importance and possibly great renown for the city of Innsbruck. Uh-huh, and you're definitely not buttering me up for anything that I could, uh, sign off on. Please, Mr. Von Spront, tell us, uh, what Napma... Please, we would prefer if you would say it in full. What the Innsbruck Archaeological Private Members Association has discovered. Well, it is a remarkably well-preserved example of some macrofauna from the Pleistocene. By the rings and the tail and the sheer size of it, uh, this could be a genetic ancestor to perhaps all the population of Innsbruck. Rings on the tail. I'm sorry, Mr. Von Spron. Ancestor of what? Our city is fine raccoons, of course. So the NAP, the Innsbruck Archaeological Private Members Association, has discovered a giant macrofauna ancestor of the raccoon? Yes, this Ursa Pergamentum, or as I like to call it myself, Gigantacoon, is perhaps the earliest known evidence of a raccoon in the city of Innsbruck, and, and is therefore the, uh, the mitochondrial eve, one might say, of uh, all of our tiny shuffle cats. That's amazing. Where is it? Where have you found this discovery? Well, that's an interesting story. I was taking my morning constitutional along the Chamber flood plain when I caught my eye upon a very shiny yet round piece of stones that I have not seen before. I was uh, bending down to uh, look at it, sweeping away some of the detritus from around it. And I'm hello! Hello! Don't listen to this charlatan! Oh, I haven't been. That's right, radio listeners. It's me, Raphael Crinklestoof. I'm calling from the kitchen. Sorry, how are you on this line? Well, Graham, it is actually quite simple. If you're on a landline and you pick up the phone in a house where there's already a call going on, you get what we call a uh, Munich party line. Last time I was on one of those, it cost me $1.50 a minute. As much as I hate to say it, my detestable colleague is correct. I am calling from the kitchen, and Mr. Von Spront is currently occupying the phone in the den, thinking he could beat me to this big scoop. You, 
You two live together? This is a reality TV show. Nein, this is the reality of scientific progress. The funding for the paleontological arts is uh, very low these days. I've had to make many concessions to continue my lifelong pursuit of science. In this case, the Innsbruck Archaeological Society had to acquire a new office. You, you keep calling it a society, and yet I have yet to see the great seal of Innsbruck on the registration documents. No, the Innsbruck Archaeological uh, Private Members Association would like to invite uh, all citizens of Innsbruck down to uh, see the excavation of the Gigantacoon. Sorry, you haven't excavated it yet? How do you know what it is? Well, we hired a local pilot to fly over it with ground-penetrating radar, and the level of penetration we achieved could not be believed! Graham, can you cover me for 30 seconds? I want to nuke some popcorn. Oh, heck yeah. Mr. Von Spratt? And after spending many long and very, very expensive months interpreting the data, the silhouette could not be mistaken as... Anything except a Giganticoon. Damn it, Von Spront, I've told you! We are not calling it a Giganticoon! Its name is Big Racky! His name may be Big Racky, and judging by the form of the radar, he has amazing testicles, but I assure you that it is a Giganticoon by species. He was already making popcorn, what I miss? Uh, it has amazing testicles. Big Racky's enormous distended scrotum surely caused him great distress in perambulation. Hey, Michael, you want popcorn? I'm right here. And so are we. And we at the Innsberg Archaeological Society stand for nothing if not the barest truth. Big Racky had sore balls. I don't need to hear that. Just stop. Could you stop? It is an indisputed fact that the Giganticoon had enormous testicles which kept it from moving about to find the mates. It is the Innsbruck Archaeological Private Members Association's opinion and hypothesis that this is the reason why they kept a harem of slightly smaller female raccoons around specifically for breeding purposes. His name is Big Racky, and we're the Innsbruck Archaeological Society. Look, I even put the sign out front this morning. Besides, how are we going to get all these people into our basement? First of all, Crinkle Stoof, that sign is nothing more than a recordable CD that you sharpied the name to, then stuck in the microwave because you thought it would look cool. And second, that basement will be plenty enough to house as many school classrooms as we need once the second exit is added to make for, let's call it, airy ambulatory movement. What do you mean the basement? Are you digging in this house you've rented? Where the hell are you guys? Didn't you ask say you were on the Chumbo floodplain? The layabouts at City Hall wouldn't give us a permit to excavate any part of the Chumbo floodplain, so we rented a house nearby. The only thing on the Chumbo floodplain is Highway 3. There's no houses nearby. Oh no. There's one. Oh. There are no laws against digging on private property. We simply employed some lateral sinking to the opportunity. We rented a very big drill. So you're digging sideways out from the basement of the Highway 3 spite house? In the general direction of where we think Big Racky is, yes. And technically, we do have to call it an in-law suite. We got the idea from a film we watched during movie night. I believe what you call the tagline of that film was, uh, I drink your dig site? I drink it up? Still a lot of drainage to worry about, though. Hydrological concerns of that matter are for future us to worry about. And we haven't met future us yet. But the technology is under heavy development. Watch this space. And time! Well, I'm glad you two are getting along. Look forward to hearing from future me when the highway caves in. So there you have it, listeners. Now future you has a chance to get an eyeful of Big Racky's sore balls at the Highway 3 Spite House. Uh, yeah, this is one shot you probably want to miss. Well, speaking of sore balls, we go now to Richter Hammock Slam up in the QWRP traffic coopter. How's it going up there, Richter? Hi, Clay. I'm sorry I can't chat right now. I'm actually in the middle of work. I'm doing some ground-penetrating radar, and unfortunately the radio signals really play havoc with the results, so I'm going to have to let you go. Talk to you later, though. Bye! Well, I didn't want to talk to him anyway. Oh, Joan's light's going off. Um, Yes, next is uh, It's the Arts with e- e- Montgomery Cone. What? Hi. 
That's Rat Sports fans, me, Montgomery Cohen, your sports reporter. Now also come to you doing the arts, because I beat the legendary Edith Slump in a drinking contest, and she owed me a favor, and now I get to do the arts, so there. Monty, the only reason you can drink more peach scrobbler than I can is because I don't want to drink any peach scrobbler. A win on a technicality is still a W in my books, Edith. Okay, so what's happening in the arts? I'm dying to find out. What's happening this week, Graham? I'm happening. I'm happening all over the arts here in Innsburg. I recently trod the boards, and I want to talk about it to the audience. Monty, you act? Hell yeah, Graham. Sideball? Musical theater? I'm a triple threat. What's your third threat? It's a surprise, Alex. That's why it's a threat. Anyway, the arts. Did you know that the Innsburg Children's Theater Society is doing an adaptation of Salome? I did not know that. I am keenly aware... They finally got the last of their permission slips signed, but it turns out, if you're going to do the Dance of the Seven Veils, you gotta be 18 years of age or older. That's where your old pal Monty comes in. Comes in how? Stage left, I think. You guessed it, Alex. That's the third threat. I offered to dance. Well, congratulations. I am both surprised and threatened. What would you say your favorite part of being in Salome has been so far? Well, there's this one part where they take one of the little kids, who's like one of the actors, and lock him in a water tank. And he screams that Jesus is coming for like five solid minutes. It's a hoot. Then they clear the auditorium and I'm allowed to come out and dance. And how is the choreography treating you? I spin a little, I juke a little, you know, I kind of dodge my oncoming opponents. But it's a little less John Madden and a little more Bob Fosse, if you get my meaning. It is distressingly clear, yes. Hey, Cone, where can I get tickets? I might actually want to watch this. Alex, you want tickets? I got a book of 50 in my backpack. So there you go, sports fans. Come on down to the Innsburg Children's Sears Society and check out Salome. I'll be signing autographs after the show, but remember to bring proof of ID, because if you're underage, you'll have to go outside for a three-minute smoke break. Well, thank you. Um, is there anything else going on in the arts this week? Monty is leaving. The, he has left the studio. He's He's gone. Hey, Edith, why were you having a drinking contest with him in the first place? Because he really wanted me to cover a play he was in, and I was trying to save him some embarrassment. Well, from food for the soul to food whenever you need it, we go now to summer intern Derek, who is on location at the corner of Chobalt Boulevard and Bitumen Tangle at the grand opening of Innsburg's first Kitty Corner Plus location. How's it going, Derek? Man, it's so great that you guys gave me this assignment. I haven't been to a Kitty Corner Plus yet. Checking off that bucket list, huh? I'll keep an eye out for one, Your Excellency. You sound real excited to be there, Derek. How can it not be, Graham? There's kitty corners all over Thurston County, but this is the first time Innsburg gets to enjoy the luxurious shopping experience of a kitty corner plus. I mean, I get what you're saying. I went to a kitty corner plus in Lesser Miami once, and it was pretty nice. You did? And you didn't bring back any limited edition merchandise? I just wanted a chocolate bar, Derek, not a commemorative Schlorpo cup. They had El Schlorpo flagging and you didn't even get me one? Derek? You didn't even call to ask. Derek, can you please describe the grand opening of this luxury convenience store? Oh, where do I begin, Graham? It's a magical day here in the streets of Innsburg. The Kitty Corner Plus stands majestically three stories tall. Each story, the same as the one below it, so that everyone can have the same shopping experience. Wait, I never went upstairs, the one that I went to. All three floors are the same? You didn't? No, there was no elevator, and it sounds like I didn't need to. But the second floor is the only place you can order tickets to go to the animation museum. So then they're not the same. Well, I suppose you're right, Graham. But we're not counting the whole as-is secret basement, are we? The whole secret basement is as-is? I know, right? Normally you just see as-is chips and as-is coffee sitting on the shelves upstairs, but now we have an entire floor devoted to the Kitty Corner house brand. That means you can buy rare products. Ooh, do they have the as-is box wine? I can't go past the beaded curtain on the radio, Graham. I'm 19. Oh, I bet that's where they keep all the as-is novelties. Oh, no, you can buy as-is ice cream sandwiches on the first floor. Ooh, do they make those with the same ice cream they put in the thick ones? They sure do, Graham. And actually, that's a great point. Listeners, when you come to Kitty Corner Plus, uh, today only, you can get either a free Schlorpo or they'll add ice cream to it so you can get yourself your own thick one. You know, they banned thick ones in Innsburg like three years ago, and I couldn't figure out why. Yes, yeah, some idiot kid in Houston choked on a straw and ruined it for everybody. Oh, I guess it's true what they say, Alex. Not everyone can handle a real thick one. But the company has said they're staying their ground. They're not trading it out for soft serve. So you're going to get real hard ice cream in your real thick one. And they're going to give out reinforced spoons so this never happens again. Oh, hey, this is a grand opening. Is the mascot there? Oh, he sure is, Graham. Hypotenuse the corner kid has been walking around all morning giving out free as his protractors to kids. And everyone's getting temporary tattoos that say, I've had a thick one. 
I am honestly really excited about this. I'm going to be having as his sandwiches for my lunch for like two weeks. Yeah, can we get over there during the break? I want to get a Slurpo before they run out of carob. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, thanks, Derek, for the remote. Uh, we're actually going to get over there in a second. I got a real hankering for a thick one. Can you have them start the machine? Graham, I was assigned to do a serious hard-hitting piece on the opening of a beloved business. I shouldn't be running your personal errands like some sort of intern. I'll buy you an opening day Slurpo Stein. Start cranking that thick one, guys. Well, that takes us up to the break. When we come back to celebrate the dedication of Lake Anesh 2, Mutu's Indian Cuisine is having a Paneer for Gold promotion. Mutu is asking hungry diners to relive the thrill of the Klondike by staking a claim on the banks of the mighty Rogan Josh River Buffet and sift out nuggets of unpasteurized cheese just like the prospectors. I've often found the best way to get all the Paneer is long-walled cheese mining. Just rake the wall and let the raclette fall behind you. And the Innsburg College of Operative Surgical Practitioners is holding their open mic night tomorrow at the campus amphitheater. So come on down and let's all find out what's inside Mike. Very nice of Mike to donate his body to science like that. Donate? Yeah, that's what he did. Stick around, everyone. More Corpline after this. You're listening to Corpline here on QWRPFM. Thanks again to our sponsor, Charlemagne Boomerang Meringue, a dessert fit for an emperor that you can send to your friends with a flick of the wrist, the Charlemagne Boomerang Meringue. Order one now to avoid the harangue. 